So, Noah, off of Joe's point about certain Republicans, your recent opinion piece for MSNBC is entitled On Russia, Trump's Greatest Republican Allies Drastically Misread the Signs, and you write in part this. How did the populist wing of the Republican Party so completely misread both the national interests menaced by Russia and the popular response to it? The simplest explanation for this calculation is that they misread Trump's presidency. These Republicans convinced themselves that what right-leaning voters liked about Trump's approach to Russia was his tendency to flatter the Russian autocrat, and they only tolerated his administration's otherwise confrontational approach to relations with Moscow. In fact, it was the other way around. They obsessed over the cultural objectives of their domestic adversaries to such a degree that it rendered them vulnerable to emotional manipulation by malignant actors abroad. And they brought into the idea that Trumpism was an epochal Jacksonian realignment rather than a cultish fad. The nationalist right overinterpreted its moment and subsequently lost it. You know, wow. Noah, over the past Hello. five years during the age of Trump, I was so shocked that people that you and I grew up reading were, were, were taking up residence in Hungary, getting money from Orban uh, so they could sit there in this great cultural war with a guy who actually himself was at war with Western democracy, against you know a liberal democracy, and I remember reading uh, a guy who I've known and respected for a long time, going on and on. I don't know if it was Tootsie Rolls or Twix bars, but somebody dared like put uh, put uh, the 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 flag, uh, the LBGTQ flag, on a wrapper of candy, and he was explaining why Orban would never do such thing. And I just sat there going, really? You, you are going to sacrifice Western democracy because, uh, because if it's an issue of uh, a trans swimmer or something else, you know, that, that because of how elites act towards 0.003% of the population, you're willing to sell out Western democracy. It, you're right. It was this cultish fad, and somehow in all of that, Orban became people's hero, and Vladimir Putin did, and not just to this small subsection. You saw the, the, the depressing polls about how many Republicans had a positive view of Vladimir Putin before this war uh, uh, began. Yeah, but there was always an element within, uh, first, uh, social conservatism and projecting strength abroad can exist within the same Republican coalition they right. have for my adult lifetime. This is not difficult to, to thread that needle. Um, but cultural conflict became so preeminent, a, 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 a unifying force within a particular subset of the populist nationalist right, that they did begin to believe their own hype and believe that the Republican Party had all but abandoned this notion that the United States can and should project force abroad, can and should attract allies, and, and hem in uh, bad actors abroad like Vladimir Putin. Um, and if you were, like I said in the op-ed, if you were focusing on Donald Trump's record of obsequious, mind-bogglingly obsequious flattery towards Vladimir Putin, often at the expense of his own administration and certainly of his own allies, then you will perceive that, well, this is a sea change here in the Republican movement. They've moved beyond this idea that the United States is the, is the global hegemon, the so, so sole superpower that should um, in, influence other events abroad and influence its, uh, its foreign, uh, use its foreign policy to attract its inter interests and secure its interests. And then you ignored all the other stuff that the administration was doing, then focusing only on the rhetoric because the stuff the administration was doing was more hawkish than any Republican administration in my lifetime towards Russia. Magnitsky asked, Magnitsky asked sanctions against officials within the Kremlin, uh, getting diplomats out of this country, seizing consular property, intervening against Syria, a Russian vassal state, engaging in set-piece land battles with Russian forces, uh, Russian mercenaries, rather, in Syria. Um, all this stuff is what we wanted to see from a Republican administration. And the populist right convinced itself, well, this is just the, the final gasp 
of, a, of a, a, a strain of Republicanism that's on its way out, when it was precisely the opposite. We've never seen anything that confrontational from a Republican administration before. That was the direction the party was moving. And you would just, if you had just looked only at the rhetoric alone, you'd convince yourself of a, a, a illusory version of the Republican Party that didn't exist in the first place. In recent days, former President Trump has modified his tone towards Vladimir Putin. Uh, he has been a little more critical of there, but certainly we should not forget uh, the years and years of praise he has heaped upon uh, the leader in Moscow. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.